I have uh, before me uh, another guest for you. Um, this uh, is a lady uh, who I'm guessing is from Scotland originally. We'll find out in a moment. Yes. Her name is Margaret, and she uh, is something to do with holy socks. Good morning, Margaret. Good morning. Uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm I'm getting a Scottish accent, which I particularly am happy about. Are you originally from Scotland? Are you living in Scotland? Originally from Scotland, yes. Uh, originally the East Coast. But we now, well, we've, we've moved around a fair bit, as you do in life. And uh, we, we're now settled in the southwest, uh, Dumfries and Galloway very near where Christianity was first brought to Scotland. Uh, I, I need to be careful with this because we do sell our socks on Iona and most people will have heard of St Columba and the island of Iona. A lot of people may well have been there, but Christianity actually came to Scotland uh, via St Ninian and St Ninian came to live in Whithorn which is about 20 odd miles from here. Uh, so, you know, I I, I I feel a great loyalty to St. Ninian. Uh, and in recent years, there is, uh, they've um, revived the Pilgrim Way from Glasgow Cathedral through Paisley Abbey, down the West Coast through Ayrshire and, and right down to Whithorn and the Isle of Whithorn. Uh, so I, I, I'm, become very fond of this part of Scotland in, in the last few years since we've been here. I can understand that. Um, right, so you've stayed in Scotland, you move around a bit in Scotland. Have you got some family with you as well? Uh, my, well, I have a son and daughter. My daughter lives in Glasgow. Uh, the son lives up beside Loch Long, which uh, if you ever see the new, the new aircraft carrier coming back to Scotland, it sails up Loch Long, uh, and it's it's quite a sight. So he's up there with uh, his partner and his wee boy, and uh, it's about a three and a bit hour drive. So not so handy. No, but I have seen that aircraft carrier um, in Southampton docks. We did a little tour on the harbour, mm -hmm. um, and yes, it is quite a shock when you realise it's not just a big boat. It's it's <laughs> it's it's a it's massive, isn't it? It's massive. <laughs> yeah it, it, it's quite a sight right uh so holy socks which is what we've come to talk about yeah uh, you were at creation resources exhibition or one of your clients i didn't meet you but my operations manager did and i thought well this this is interesting um clothing doesn't surprise me there are lots of people making lots of different clothes mm -hmm. t-shirts for christians they are yep. everywhere it's almost mm -hmm. like a thing if you haven't got a christian t-shirt are you really you know a churchgoer <laughs> <laughs> but holy socks, where does that one come from? Well, uh, the end of last century now, isn't that an odd thing to say? <laughs> <laughs> we feel old, I, don't we? <laughs> I, I was doing a course with what was then the Scottish Church's Open College. And it, it was a very clever course uh, because you, you, got, you did a weekly course with your sort of local people. But four times a year, you got to go away with about, well, we're about 30 odd of us uh, for a weekend where, where you had more intensive study and what have you. And we were discussing one night what we called the Jesus Loves You t-shirt. And we must have been a real reserved, a, a bunch of reserved Scots because we weren't very, you know, there are such things. Uh, we, we, we weren't that keen on wearing it. Uh, and my memory of it is that someone was sitting wearing Wallace and Gromit socks. And I thought, what a good idea. Biblical socks. You know, you're sitting there, you can adjust, the, you know, the trousers so that you show your socks. <laughs> and, you know, as someone will say, what's that on your feet? You know, I mean, we, we have socks which uh, have sheep on one leg and goats on the other. Now, if you're sitting there, I know mismatched socks have become a bit of a thing, but, you know, you're sitting there and you're looking at somebody and think, what on earth are they all about? So you say to them, what's that on your sock? And you can take it, you know, it's a nice, gentle, humorous introduction uh, to the Christian faith. Um, and, you know, the, the person wearing the socks can 
explain it, you know, hopefully very gently, very kindly, uh, and and engage with with the person. And you know, I I do get emails and I do hear, you know, this does happen. Uh, so so that was sort of part of the idea, and also, um, I mean, we hear all about, you know, in the last oh, 20, 30, almost thirty years. Uh, you know, we now hear all about, you know, oh, it was a wonderful journey and it was, you know, up and downhill and what have you. In those days, it wasn't so common. Um, and I thought, you know, that's a real illustration of you're walking with Jesus. You're walking with the Bible, with God and what have you. And that that's the other thing. And you can't have too many T-shirts, but you can never have too many socks. <laughs> uh, because even in this house, I, you know, I struggle sometimes to find a pair that match or a pair that don't match. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I thought, you know, we, we, we were talking about this, you know, and I said, oh, somebody must be doing this. So I thought, right, I'll be the clever one. I'll go back. And uh, I don't know if you probably are just old enough to remember the start of home computers when you had that line along the bottom of the screen. Oh, I'm definitely old enough for that. Right. Well, you know, and, and you went and made a cup of tea while the line made its way slowly along the screen. Well, several cups of tea later, I had tried holy socks, biblical socks, Christian socks, spiritual socks, every kind of sock search that I, I could think of that you know would bring up holy socks and the only thing I found was you know that traditional face of Jesus the long hair yeah. the thin face what have you somebody was putting that in a sock and I think God must have been turning my cogs sure. already because I thought I'm not putting that on a sock but I, I, I then looked up uh, my husband and you didn't get the Bible online in those days. Can you imagine it? Yeah, how far have it come? Yeah. Um, and I thought, right, I'll I'll just type in. He, he'd given me a, a Bible explorer, and I thought I'll just type in feet, and I'll type in walking and foot and heel and toe and you know, and up came about six hundred odd verses, and even once you'd taken out the foot on the mountain, <laughs> the foot <laughs> of the mountain. <laughs> Um, you know, I mean, wonderful verses. And I thought, oh, I thought this is this is a bit more than a laugh. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there is sort of something serious underpinning this. So I think it, it we eventually became holy socks, faith on your feet. And I always think that the holy socks makes you laugh. And the faith on your feet makes you think. And provided I keep the two intention, then it works. If you go too much to the laugh, it's silly. It loses something. And if you get too serious, you know, uh, it loses something again. Because I have discovered that God has a wonderful sense of humour. Doesn't he just? And never misses a trick. So. Yes, humour, you know, and and if you can make someone laugh, you've kind of opened a door. And then we all know life is not easy sometimes. And, you know, if you if if I can keep the two in tension, then it works and it works well. So that was the bit that was the beginning of it. Um, as I say, we, we, we sold our first pair of socks in 2000, which seems quite ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So how many pairs of socks are you selling now? I mean, are, are you selling, is, are we talking about half a dozen a month or are we talking about a proper factory business? Well, we our socks are made, they used to be made in the UK totally. Um, but they're now designed in the UK. We still have some that have been made in the UK, um, but they're, they're now designed in the UK and made in Turkey. 
the, the socks that we get now are made with yarn from Better Cotton Initiative, which means that the, the cotton producers get more for their, their product. And Similar to helps. fair trade sort of idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they can also do the, the soft tops, which is important for, for a lot of people. They have a wonderful designer at the moment. And, you know, I mean, some of our designs are quite complicated. <laughs> um, but she's great and she loves the back and forward. You know, um, or could you, you know, could you try this instead? And she'll come back and, and do it. And I'll say, oh, that doesn't really work. So we'll go back to the, you know, the original, um, which, which is great fun. Um, and, and yeah. You know, so so we have quite a range, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Is yeah. So I mean, you, you talked about some of the journey. You were on a, a, a theological course of some sort. You had a yeah. a group chat. You then saw socks and inspired. I love how God inspires us. Even I mean, for myself, I get sometimes repulsed by things, and it leads to really good things. But yeah. if I didn't have that initial, oh, I don't like that. Actually, yeah. I probably wouldn't want to take that first yeah. step towards something else. I've had that, so I definitely yeah. understand that. But is making socks, is this something you've had to learn literally on the job and, and the journey of your own journey? Or have you got some fabric history back there where manufacturing is something you get? No. No? Okay. Not a bit. <laughs> uh, and no business experience either, which is, you know... Um, you know, we, we've survived by the grace of God, not by my skills. Amen. Um, it's, yeah, you, you, you learn. But I suppose everybody learns, you know. And, and uh, you just, I, I remember, I, I thought when I started on this course that I was going to end up in ordained ministry. Let's put it like that. Um, and... And that would have been a disaster. It it just I can't imagine how awful I would have been at it, and uh, it, it just wouldn't. And I remember coming down, I, I really got inspired by you know the socks, and I was like, oh, we could do this, we could do that, do this and that, all, all sorts of stuff. And I remember coming down the stairs in our where we lived then, and I think, but God, I thought you wanted me in the ministry because my my ideas of ministry were. Um, and I, I really felt God was giving me the choice. And I thought, well, I don't really want to, I really want to do this, the socks. And I thought, if that's okay with you, God, I'll take the socks. So um, it, it ended, um, one of the funniest, um, you know, talk about a sense of humour. Um, I, I kind of was, the start was kind of stuttering um, because originally I thought, oh, I thought I'd like to do with the, this with Christian Aid or something and, and have the sort of made in the Philippines under there. And somebody did help me towards that. But when the, the person I was supposed to be meeting, uh, had, when she was in the UK, I didn't know until she'd gone back. So it didn't work. And then some friend said, uh, look, my husband works with Scottish Enterprise. He'll get you a list of sock manufacturers in the UK. So this list arrived and I thought, right, having thought about having them made abroad, uh, I thought I'd, I'd like to get somebody in Scotland. So there were three Scottish ones. One was in care and maintenance. One was closed altogether and the other imported their socks from China. So I thought, right, mm. start at the top of this list. And it was quite thick, it's about an inch and a half thick or something. And I looked down, at, come off the computer alphabetically. And I looked down and there was the legend, Angel Hosiery Limited, Leicester. And I thought, you are having a laugh, God. Mm. Uh, Ricky closed down a, a number of years ago, but for a while we did have holy socks made by angels. I love that. I just, you know, I just thought, yeah, I haven't, I couldn't. But, but that, that's, that's where we started with holy socks made by angels. So I kind of took that as, okay, let, let's go yeah. this way. <laughs> I definitely get the inspiration thing. Um, I love how God 
we, we have in our mindset what we think it is that God asks us yeah. to do. And then we say, why, God, aren't you getting this right? Because you told me to do this. <laughs> and God's saying, no, 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 no. You've, you've gone. Let's come back a little bit. Actually, how about this instead? And uh, yeah, I, I can understand that, that. But that's what we do as humans. We, we hear something or we, we feel something. So we kind of make steps one to ten. And God's saying, let's, let's just do the first step. Let's just do one step. <laughs> um, but I also love the other element that you said you didn't have any experience of business. And there's two two things, I think, when God uses us as we are, mm. either he uses the skills and resources um, that we've gained in mm. normal life. And he, you know, he helps us to adapt them into our situation. Yes. But the really special stuff, not better, but just <laughs> special different is when God says, all right, you've got no knowledge. You're perfect because of your heart. And <laughs> Um, I've seen that in my own life. Uh, I've never set up a radio station before last year. We did it. I've got some knowledge of business. I've run a business in the past. I know how to do graphics and videos and speak and speak on a radio. But I didn't know how to run a radio station. Actually, sometimes that's better in a way. It's more certainly more special because then you have to have that dependency upon God, yes. which you may not feel that need to have if you know loads of stuff. It's, it, for me personally, it's the difference between common sense and God's sense. Yes. And God doesn't use common sense much in scripture. You look at the, you know, <laughs> King David. King David's like a little boy. Well, that's not right. That's not good. He yeah. should be mature. And, you know. So yes. it's it's I love how God um redefines our own perception. And when we can go back to him and say, but you said this. No, I didn't. <laughs> Let's <laughs> no, try this instead. That's, that's, that's what you understood from it. But actually. Exactly. And then Holy Socks was born, and I love that. Um, so how many designs have you got? I, I'm I'm guessing that you, you they change throughout the year. You keep some, bring some back. So how many designs have you actually yeah. got at the moment? Um, I think we've got about, probably about 30 at the moment. Um, men's always size, always sell better than women's. It's an easy one for, for Dad's Day, isn't it? Exactly. And I mean, it's it's the double laugh. It's a pair of socks, as you're expecting. Of course, <laughs> we'll give you socks. Ah, but these are different. These are holy socks. Excellent. <laughs> uh, so, so it's the double laugh with, with that. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we could do with the men coming and buying socks for women. Huh. Uh, but, yeah, it does. We, we're, I'm actually expecting tomorrow... Uh, two designs that we haven't had for a while uh, and we've kind of adapted uh, one is uh, for how no that's the mountains see we have a design for the mountains with how beautiful on the feet mm. are the, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those of Uh and we have one with the hills uh, I will lift my eyes to the hills and I, I, I did try to do both with the hill design, but then I thought that's not really fair because mountains are higher than hills, so we've got to have two designs. So we haven't had the hills for a while, but it's a very, very popular one. And that's actually arriving tomorrow. Oh. Uh, and the other one that's arriving tomorrow is the moon and stars, uh, which, which is, uh, it's it's a very, it's, quite a special one because uh, it has a wee figure on it which is pointing to the moon and the stars uh, and the, the, the figure was uh, talk about God using what, what you're enthusiastic about um, I uh, always used to like motorsport when I was 16 I wanted to be a rally driver when I was 17 I wanted to be an engineer you know um, and we, we actually ended up uh, sponsoring a, a rally car crew cool. with socks and every round of the Scottish Championship I would give them a different pair of socks and I'd adapt the leaflet for them and what have you and um, one of the mechanics who worked on the sock, who worked on the car um, he, he loved his socks and he was he'd come, always come up and say oh thank you Mark I really like these socks it's good. Anyway, um, he was 40 when he, he, he died of pancreatic cancer. And as a, as, as a really as a, as a kind of tribute to him, uh, and uh, we, we have him in his little suit 
uh, is, is mechanic suit and a red cap, which I gave him as well. And he's pointing at the moon and stars. Uh, so that one's arriving tomorrow as well. We haven't had that for a while. But yeah, uh, I mean, I, I have, I've, I've still got loads of ideas. Uh, one of one of my, you see, I've got lots that I, I, I really enjoy. Um, I mean, we, we have one which is the whirling wheels. You know, Ezekiel and his his description of the angel with the wheels and the eyes and what have you. And uh, I thought I'd really like to do that for, particularly with a rally crew. So we have one with uh, two a wheel on either side of each sock. So you have four wheels. And underneath one sock, you have a spare wheel. And the, the, the you don't just get the socks with holy socks, you, you you get a leaflet as well and I write a story for the socks. Uh, so one of our first designs was Jonah and the whale, and I write a story from the whale's point of view. Uh, but the, the the one with the whales is about how much we use God as a spare wheel. Huh. When there is a problem, or we get a bit of a flat tire, we take God out of the boot, <laughs> then we say, when we're done with the crisis, we stick God back in the boot. Huh. Uh, so I, I I'm very fond of that one. Uh, another one we have. Uh, have you got any with you? I have. Yeah, I, I show us some. Yeah, this this is our nice and bright. Uh, this is right. So you got a wheel, red sock, spare wheel. I like that. Red sock, spare wheel uh, on there. But you also have this is this is a spare wheel. Oops, dropped it. That's a very vibrant red as well. It's a it's a beautiful. For people listening, it's a very good red sock, and and that's that that's the spare wheel on this on the sole of of that one. Um, is is that is that stitching of the image or is that a, a transfer? No, it's it's stitched into the into the sock. Oh, great good quality that'll, socks that last ages. <laughs> uh, and and we have this one here uh, with the sparrows. So that's a blue sock with a with a sparrow on it. If you're listening with to this, lots of sparrows. Yeah, that's uh, sweet. It's it's a nice one. What we've tried to do is um, we have ones which are obviously Christian. Yeah, but we have lots that are not obviously Christian. I mean, anybody could wear anybody could wear the wheels, but also anybody could wear the sparrows uh, because I, I kind of. You know, it, somebody might not be Christian. They'll be given a pair. And I think, I'm not wearing them. But one day, that will be the only pair left in the drawer. Of course it will. <laughs> only clean pair you have left. And, you know, it, it's fine. They, they they won't worry about wearing them. But they'll, they'll have thoughts, I'm sure. They'll have thoughts. Um, yeah. Yes, our Jonah and the Whale. We've had several versions of this, but this one, uh, our current one, is a ship and rough sea and the adult size. We, we don't make the, we make these in children's sizes as well, but they're not quite so, they don't, I don't give them such a rough sea. So that's sort of a, a grey sock with a, like a Viking boat, isn't it? Viking sail Yeah, it, well, the thing is, if you, if you make the sail pure white, it doesn't really look very good on the sock. No. <laughs> Not uh, so so yeah, it looks a bit like a Viking boat, but you know they had storms as well. Uh, and Jonah is here. He, I will explain why he's all in yellow in a moment. Um, but he's about to jump ship. So on the other sock, you have the whale, <laughs> and the whale is. Oh, designed... I love that blue. That's a great blue color of a whale. <laughs> um, you yeah, actually, uh, when you put your foot in here. It's like you're putting the sock, the whales all around the sock. So it's like when you're putting your foot in here, you're putting your foot into the whale's mouth. I love that. It's, I love the irony of that. That's good. It's brilliant. But but Jonah is yellow because uh, we were back to talking about skills and what skills I had to learn. Um, I 
my son was about 15, 16 at the time, and he had a friend who was a, a real computer whiz kid. And uh, he showed me, sat very patiently with me for hours, uh, showing me how to make the sock, okay, the sock, but Jonah smaller than the sock. Uh, how to colour Jonah so that he was, you know, not, I didn't make everything the same colour. Hmm. I spent ages with me, with me on this. And he decided that when Jonah went into the whale's mouth, he would put on, he should put on his oil skins and sou'wester. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in thanks and honour of Ross and his patience, uh, I, I, I've left Jonah in his oil skins and I love that. It's, it's well, it's, you know, why not? Why not? Um, if you're listening now, you need to watch the video later and you get to see uh, the socks that we've just been trying to describe. Not brilliantly described, <laughs> but uh, if you want to actually see them, then you need to watch the video later. Uh, Margaret, can you give us the website? Where can people come and find uh, find your socks? What's your website address? Uh, the, the website address is Holy Socks dot co dot uk fairly simple holy socks dot co uk if you want to yeah. go and look at these socks and um, margaret thank you so much can you give me as we finish one uh -huh. story that you know of where the socks have made a positive transformation into someone's life oh gosh um someone did phone me very early on and told me that they had just sat in their bedroom and wept over something I'd written. Wow. And I just thought, oh my goodness. You know, and and what what do you say? <laughs> you know, you, you you just pick up the phone. And in those days, you know, it could have been anything. Uh, the numbers didn't come up or anything. It was just, you know, um, but yeah, the, the, there's lots of stories and and lots of stories that you you can't you can't share, you know, um, and I, I don't know because I send these out or the, you know we sell in cathedral shops and church shops all over the UK, and you don't know where they're going, and it used to kind of annoy me to begin with because. I thought, I don't know. I don't know if these are getting anywhere. I don't know what they're doing. But now, maybe, maybe it's because I, I have had enough feedback, you know, to know that they are appreciated. And you get out at exhibitions and Christian resources exhibitions and what have you. And, and you do get, you know, the reaction, um, which is mostly positive. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of quite content not to know. Because how how can you? You know, we said we said. <laughs> but it, it yeah, I I it it's something I think it's something worthwhile. And you don't know, you know, it may not be an instant reaction. I'm I'm a great one for the drip, drip, drip theory. Mm -hmm. You know, I will put a drop of water in, someone else will put a drop of water in. And eventually, you know, it becomes something which somebody somebody uh, it all take, gets to the stage where someone cannot resist God. There's been enough drips and they're going to say, okay, now I give in. Uh, so, so I, I, you know, so much I don't know, but I, I just keep going. There's a lovely image. It's a guy called Dutch Sheets, who's an American guy who writes about prayer. And he wrote... What, someone said, how does prayer work? When does God answer the prayer? <laughs> and he came with this beautiful image, which I think sums up what you're saying and sums up prayer. And he said, imagine heaven, there's the floor, and the floor has got all these bowls, and they're all different sizes. Every time you pray, your tear is put in a bowl. And when the bowl is filled, God answers the prayer. And he said it was just a, a, a you know an illustrative way of, mm. when is that prayer going to be answered? And I thought it was really helpful because we don't know the size of the bowl. We don't know how many bowls are needed for a prayer, so just keep praying. But I love the idea of every prayer is a tear added to a bowl, all the tears added together from everywhere 
get added into the bowl. When the bowl overflows, the prayer is answered. And I thought that was a really beautiful illustration of we don't know what the difference is that we're going to make, but we might be that final one. Yeah, it, it's true. It's true. I mean, I, I know from my, I mean, I, I always knew God was there. I did not know how much, how deep, how, you know, and I, I'm I'm still discovering, you know, the, the depth you can go to with God. Uh, and it's it's yeah it's it's interesting mm. <laughs> to no, say the least. <laughs> Very much. Just give us your website one more time so people can uh, can know where to come to find you. Yeah, it's Holy Socks. That's H O L Y S O C K S dot co dot uk. Margaret, thank you for showing us some of your socks and sharing some of your journey. Um, I've been waiting for this a while. I was really excited by it because I love anything that can get people to think and to point them towards the beauty of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, we can push and we can push, but actually just, you know, we, we're, we're ambassadors. We reflect Jesus if we get it right. And I love yeah. how you're doing that through the simplicity of something that probably we all have at least one pair of through socks. <laughs> so thank you for listening to that call and for what you're doing. Thank you very much, Margaret. Thank you. It's been great. Thank you. <laughs>